Hi guys, so today I'm doing a painting using all golden fluids. I have to say, I haven't done one of these in a long time, but Courtney Holscher inspired me and I used her pouring recipe for this one exactly. So it was fun and an interesting foray from my normal painting. And I also wanna say thank you so much to my supporters. Without you guys, I could not do this channel. So if you want to help bring more art videos, please support my channel. There is a link to the PayPal in the description box below and even small donations help. You could also support me by buying a painting, of course, or a print, which you can find in my shop at heathermaderart.com. So, so guess what you guys, I'm doing another live auction December 1st, hosted on my channel on YouTube at 4 p.m. West Coast time. There is going to be a few of my older pieces and then some new pieces to you guys. So everything's going to be very reasonably priced. Um, all the opening bids are going to start low. So this is in honor of all of my supporters and I feel like it's a great way to, you know, honor the people who honor me. <laughs> so kind of, you know, paying it forward and there'll be a lot of pretty pieces there. I'm going to do like a preview video so you can see everything that I'm going to have ahead of time. So you, anyway, so today we're working on a 12 by 24 gallery wrapped canvas and I have to say this is new for me um, these colors this color scheme first of all that's a silver background I've never done that before but Courtney's painting where she did a silver background with the golden fluids was absolutely stunning and she used this color palette so I don't often just downright copy other people's work and you'll see mine of course always has my own little flair to it but I've been a little um, kind of in a little painting rut lately and I just wanted to have some inspiration from other people so I've been watching some of my favorite artists and being inspired um, this is a painting that I layered exactly how she did from dark to light so you start with the silver background and then black micaceous oxide burnt sienna gold turquoise and pearl actually the turquoise was my own addition she actually didn't use turquoise of course I have to add something it's like being a chef when you just cannot follow a recipe. <laughs> I always, always, almost always have to add something. And then um, just a damp paper towel to draw the paint down into a swipe. A few little drips here and there for some interest. And um, I was very nervous when I first saw the silver on the canvas. I was like, oh no, this looks so drab. But the thing about the golden fluids, and you guys, I know they're expensive. Um, I'm in a place in my life right now where I truthfully cannot afford to go buy golden fluids. I'm, you know, after my little life-changing event has occurred, I'm finding myself in a totally different financial position. So I understand they can be expensive. Yet, I still tell myself when I use them, you use so little, and you don't have to use GAC 800. You don't have to. Um, the results were gorgeous, I'm not gonna lie. Like, the t I did two of these paintings, and the brilliancy and vibrancy of the paint, of the finished product was absolutely stunning, <laughs> and I, Oh, it reminded me why I love Golden Fluid so much, but I don't think it's the GAC 800 that makes the vibrancy. I think it's the fluids themselves. And you know, you use very little parts of fluid to um, the pouring medium. So even if you use Floetrol, you know, which is fairly inexpensive, um, 
The golden fluids actually are not terribly expensive when you think about how many uses you get. They really average out to be just almost the same as like a Liquitex Basics. Um, I'm going to do a whole video sometime comparing. I keep saying that, but I really want to because I just think that we have an idea about craft paints being so cheap. But a lot of times you can't even get more than, say, one painting or two paintings out of a little two ounce bottle of craft paints, and that's seven dollars. I'll tell you, if I might spend fifteen dollars on a golden fluid bottle, and I'll get like seven or eight paintings out of it, because the pigments are so strong. So I understand, you know, we can't always all run out and buy a bunch of golden fluids, but if you ever have the chance, try the iridescence, the copper, the silver, the pearl, the gold. And if you can only try one, try the gold <laughs> because they're totally ridiculously amazing and the way they dry is unlike any other brand. So no, I'm not sponsored by Golden. <laughs> I just love them. So I added a little bit more pearl because I thought uh, I wanted more of the highlight in the center and um, and then I just contemplated the composition I had some little drips of water that were on there kind of hard to see but once one of them ran down I realized I needed to tilt the whole thing which I did and then I thought oh my gosh wouldn't it be pretty with some high flow copper so I prop the canvas up like that and then I use the high flow now fluid golden fluids and high flow is different in case you don't know um, the high flow is almost like an ink if that's how thin it would be. It would be great for like airbrushing. Um, I use it to make, I used to use it a lot to make dendrites. And then I took my, <laughs> that's me taking my torch and popping the air bubbles. There's a lot of air bubbles in that high flow. And the reason I wanted the high flow is I just really wanted that copper high flow is the shiniest metallic I've ever seen in person. Um, it's totally amazing. So I just wanted a pop of metallics just in case, just in case you really couldn't see, um, the other metallics when they dried. I guess I was just nervous that they weren't gonna come out because everything looked kind of muted for a minute and so that copper was, it's like a guarantee. And then I just took uh, my little piece of plastic and swiped through. It really made the prettiest patterns. And then I started just getting crazy because I just wasn't sure where this was going and I so I added some more turquoise back into there I'm not used to working with this fluid of paint they, the consistency was extremely runny for me so I am a little bit out of my element um, Courtney makes it look really easy <laughs> and then going back and watching one of her videos I realized I didn't actually follow her swiping technique very closely so you know perhaps I should try again and um, follow it a little more closely actually I don't have any more GAC 800 so I actually can't do it exactly then I thought, okay, so we have all these straight lines and my balloon rolls would probably be a lovely accent. So I'm thinking the, curvini the curviness of the balloon rolls to the straight lines and also kind of just a way to incorporate the two sides together because I have a little bit I wouldn't say totally negative space, but a little bit of negative space there on the bottom 
and then all of the copper on the other side so it would be a good way to kind of incorporate the two now a lot of you ask me this is probably my most frequent asked question is is the paint supposed to be thick or thin for balloon rolls this goes to show that you can do either my normal consistency is thick and this paint is very thin maybe not as thin as Courtney's but um, very very thin and very much thinner than what I'm used to however as long as you don't have a tremendous amount of paint on the canvas you can still make a beautiful balloon roll and get all the lovely little patterns that occur um, now the opposite of that is if your paint is really thick on the canvas what happens is especially if you use Floetrol Floetrol is a leveling agent and it's literally meant to level your paint so what will happen is if it's too thick on the canvas you do your balloon roll and then it just flows back together <laughs> so I'm just taking my silver paint here and making sure that all the sides are perfectly covered because this is a gallery wrapped canvas so you want to be able to offer it to your client um, to hang as is without a need for a frame. This is a really beautiful canvas, you guys. And um, if you're trying to sell your work, which, you know, a lot of you are, I, I have to sell my work. It's the only way for me to be able to continue painting. And right now, although I had intended going into art full time, it's not happening. So I, um, I'm definitely having to sell my work right now in order to keep painting. Having said that, I think that when you put your work on a gallery wrapped canvas, even though the initial output is more and you might actually make less money, um, it really elevates your artwork. It elevates the feeling that your client gets when they open up the box and they see this gorgeous piece. A lot of times they don't have to frame it, so that also brings the price down for your client. And you can also charge a little bit more because of the substantial nature of the canvas. They don't warp as easy, um, they just feel good, <laughs> they look good, so it's just it's a good um, investment, I guess I would say, if you are looking to elevate your art. Now, you guys, look. You can see where I didn't do, see this little black that I'm adding? You can see on the left side I haven't added it yet. There's just not a lot of depth there. Now look as we pull back to where I added the black. Look how much depth is created just by going back in and just highlighting a few of the natural curves with the black. It just created a whole different painting, really. And, you know, I think a lot of people, um, a lot of artists are scared to add in things after the painting has been tilted. Um, and, you know, I do mess things up that way. Did you guys see my blooper video? <laughs> my spooky canvas? haunted canvas video. If you haven't seen it, you should probably watch it because it's super funny and it shows me just like failing and failing and failing. Actually, this whole week I could have put out a week's worth of fails because, man, I've been going through it. I think it's just, um, you know, like I said, it's been two months of transitionary period for me and that affects me sometimes. So, I don't know, but I just scraped off so many canvases. It was crazy the last couple weeks. Um, so yes, you know, you do make mistakes by adding sometimes at the end, but also you can really elevate your piece 
and I think this is one of those cases where just taking the time to add that black in made this whole piece extremely special and just gave it a ton of depth. This also goes to show, you know, you can use another artist for inspiration, even the point of doing the same techniques and the same color palette, and then you can still make it your own. This would not be uh, recognizable as a copy of Courtney's work, but, you know, having inspiration by other artists is part of what makes this just a beautiful cycle that we're in where we all share with each other and um, grow from each other and learn and be inspired. And um, I'm so glad that I have an opportunity to share my work and inspire others and be inspired by others when I go through my little rut. And, um, and then I get to make something beautiful. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So this painting, you guys, is, look, I just want to show you. Here's the uh, wet close, some wet close-ups. Isn't that pretty? Look at those sides, stunning with that high flow copper just over the sides. Look how shimmery. The light wasn't the greatest for that photo, but, and here it is dried. Look how pretty and bright and brilliant. Please hit the like, comment, and subscribe button as well as the bell so you can be notified so I can keep making more of these art videos just for you. Thanks for watching.